Christianity was a useful transition to take people away from paganism towards a monotheistic belief in God. Even though Christianity was false and perverted and everything else, but it took people out of the paganism role. Before the religion of Christianity, the Romans worshipped the stars, they worshipped the constellations, but as soon as they de de desired, as soon as they decided to adapt a religion, what kind of religion did they adapt? They didn't worship a god, they took a Yid, they took a Jew. How can I not be happy when I see millions of Goyim bow down to one Jew tonight? <laughs> The idol worshipping of the Christians is not as bad as the idol worshippings of Nepal or India and other places. Because they still believe in our God. In preparing the world to make the choice to receive the Mashiach, God has an intermediary stage of weaning the idolaters away from their idolatrous beliefs and introducing them to the ideas of monotheism. Christianity and Islam are like vehicles through which monotheism is being spread into the world in order to get all of humanity on board. Now we look at the Muslims. Maimonides clearly says, quote, These Ishmaelites are not idol worshippers in the least, and paganism has long since been cut out from their mouths and from their hearts, and now they worship a singular god properly and without any blemish. While we consider both Islam and Christianity to be merely stepping stones in humanity's path to true enlightenment. It is all in preparation of Mashiach. It is all the messianic era. Hashem wants to prepare the whole world to be monotheistic. He's therefore helping indirectly people who want to be monotheistic to be monotheistic. And two major religions are formed. Now, the Christians didn't do it on their own. The Jews helped them. <laughs> Remember, the first Christians were Jewish, in a sense. Who basically brought this about? They obviously embraced it, they went along with it, but, right? without having to go into too much depth of how it actually began. You know what I mean. I mean, it's coming from, Ju from Judaic sources. This was the genius, if you want to put it that way, of the uh, quintessential, most uh, influential Jewish salesman of all time. I refer to Paul. Oh, Paul. Oh, oh. Whose, real name, whose real name was Shaul, Shaul of Tarshish. And he was the, uh, the, the most successful salesman of this new creed to the Gentile masses. He was able to sell this newfangled creed which was, to some extent at least, Judaism without the commandments. Yeah. Uh, that's basically what it was. That Paul was a secret agent to break Christianity away from Judaism, to make it a separate religion so it would no longer infiltrate within. There's a radical theory that Paul was actually a from fellow sent by the Chachamim to pull Christianity away from Judaism, because it was a false way, and, and send it over to the Goyim to get the Jews out of it, to make sure it became something unpalatable for the Jews, something palatable for the Goyim, and at least it paves the way in the non-Jewish world that when Mashiach does come, they have a, such a concept. And that he sort of like, almost gave up his Torah and mitzvot, sacrificed himself for that theme. We hold, right, by the Midrash of Shimon Kepa, that Paul was actually sent by the Sanhedrin to infiltrate the movement, to neutralize their messianic military movement by spiritualizing it. The early Christians were Jews. They kept Jewish law and they believed that he was the Messiah. Christianity changed, it became a pagan religion. That's when Christianity changed. Who changed it? Paul and Peter. Peter and Paul. Peter became the first Pope in Rome. Shimon Pete. Calpus. Who we fast for on the 9th of Tibet because he was a double agent and he changed Jewish Christianity into pagan Christianity and for that we're ever grateful for him and that's why we fast but we don't tell people why we fast no one knows why we're fasting on the 9th of Tibet that marks his death at the hands of the Romans by the way they killed him we fast for a special Jew you know what his name Simon Peter Peter, according to Judaism, is what? He's a secret agent of Judaism that was put by the Jews themselves to protect the Jewish people from those big, mean Christians. It's very, very interesting. This is a little controversial because a lot of people want to deny this happened, but the, uh, but the first pope was actually a Jewish scholar 
And this first pope, who was this great scholar, he was not a pope, he was a rabbi in, living in Jaffa. He was a fisherman. And to this day, the pope wears a ring that has a fisherman on it um, from this first pope. But the first pope was actually just a great rabbi. And the Jews were being terribly hassled by the early Christians who were hanging around Israel. And he had an idea. He says, I'm, if you give me permission, he went to the sages. He said, if you give me permission, I would like to go to the temple and ask the Kohanim for certain names of God that only they're allowed to use. And I will use them, create miracles, get all the Christians excited about it, and then move them out of Israel. They have some issues with Judaism. Right? I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But wait a minute, they accept it. They have converted themselves to semi-Jews. Monotheism. Islam, later on, the same thing. They pretty much say, and they're very strong about it, and they're very monotheistic, even more so than the Christians. There's no trinity. Wait a minute, Islam, Christianity. Why now? God is preparing the Messianic era. He's preparing the whole world. And they make up the majority of the world. Even though there's a lot of Hindus and Buddhists too, there's a great percentage of Muslims and Christians. And there's so much common ground with Judaism. They're pretty much monotheistic. What did Hashem do in His great glory? What did He do? He filled the world with the religion of Christianity. Filled the world with religions based on Judaism. And then what did he do? But they think their savior fulfilled the law for us. They believe that Judaism was once true. All these religions believe that Judaism was once true. All these religions say that Judaism was the truth. In fact, Jesus and Paul all emerged out of Orthodox Pharisaic Judaism. Okay, but then there was a change. And as other Abraham religions say. Without Christianity, these Messianic prophecies could not have could never have taken place. And therefore, Christian Islam was vital to setting up the world, preparing the world for Mashiach, so they will recognize it. Because if they never were exposed to the concept, Mashiach will come and they go, what's that? At the end times, these uh, Christians will, because they've been exposed to the Bible, because they know the Bible, and they know the God of Israel, they know all the stories, they know all, they know all the content of the Bible, that will lay the groundwork for them to be with us at the end times. It's basically what he says, and that, and really that's what the redemption of the world is all about. It's everyone serving the God of Israel together. I believe the emergence of Christianity and Islam as great world religions represents a fulfillment of that mission. When the Jews were first chosen for this mission more than 3,300 years ago, only Jews and pagans existed. Today, the great majority of the world's population adheres to one of the three Abrahamic faiths. Thus, we speak of a Judeo-Christian ethic, or more accurately, a Judeo-Christian Islamic ethic. And all the doings of Jesus the Nazarene and that of the Ishmaelite Muhammad who came after him are nothing but to pave the way for the King Messiah and prepare the entire world to worship God together as it says. Both Christianity and Islam have a positive function in weaning the pagan world away from paganism. So let's centralize and worship one pagan god and then we could take that away. You, you see, so instead of having 20 of them, you have one or three or however many. I just want to say this to our Christian friends, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just, to, just to call it as it is and say it straight out, you know, you, you guys are worshiping one Jew. That's a mistake. You should be worshiping every single one of us because we all die for your sins every single day. It's the greatest paradox of history. Christianity produced so much anti-Semitism. Not only Christianity, but Christianity actually produced so much anti-Semitism. And yet, who do they respect most? <laughs> who do they adore? Who do they talk to all day? Who do they believe in? Who do they worship? Just another Jewish kid. So I'm going to say it bluntly. What Christianity said about one Jew, when true reality emerges, is really the truth about every Jew. So we're talking about when Mashiach comes. The whole world, the Gentile world, are going to serve them 
as godly in order to have a relationship with them, to draw from them. The closeness to Hashem goes through Yisrael. And that day, Hashem will be one. He will be recognized by everyone as one. There will only be one truth, one religion, one form of worship. That question is addressed in the works of Maimonides of why did Christianity emerge prior to the destruction of the Second Temple, all the religions in the world were very dissimilar to Judaism. The Jewish faith was the only Abrahamic monotheism in the world. There was no one else who believed that there was one God alone. The key is that he rebukes the nations and the Jews return back to their land. Uh, eventually they build a temple. All the nations recognize the Jewish faith as the only true faith. The end game is everyone worships one God and Jerusalem will be the center of the world. Out of that will come forth all the Torah and uh, there'll be a complete in gathering, the building of a temple. That's it. That's the end game. How you get there? That's complete chaos. It is worshiping one God. There's no longer discord between nations. Um, everyone worships one true God and uh, peace will seize the world and war will be something of the past and everyone will worship the one God of Israel. I don't want to convert people to Judaism, but I definitely want to teach people about the Torah. I want to teach the Gentiles about the Torah. And I think that Christians are the most ready to receive it because they've embraced the Messiah already. They are ready to receive a Mess messianic figure. And, and how are you going to get a Messiah that fixes everything if everybody doesn't go under it? Yeah. I mean, it's like the Messiah comes, everybody's got to follow it. Everybody has to. If you believe that the Messiah is coming here to convert all the Jews to Catholicism, you, you're probably going to be disappointed when the Messiah comes and goes straight to a synagogue. And goes straight to Judaism, puts on tefillin, and you prays to, to the God it. of Israel. My God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is who the God of creation is. And when it comes down that the Messiah comes back, the Messiah is going to bring people to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you'll ask, how did Christianity and Islam bring the world closer to serving one God? How is this paving the road for the Melech HaMashiach? Says the Rambam Ketzad. He says the Rambam, go all over the world. Go to every country in the world. Go to every far-flung island in the world. They know what God is. They know what Messiah is. They know what Bible is. They know what... The end of days are, they just have a distorted version of it. But the basic concepts that were spread throughout the world, through the religions of the world, are there for a purpose. For the Gentile world, he took them away from barbaric paganism and he made them embrace the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noach, which are the basic moral codes known as the seven Noachide laws that God gave them, Adam and the B'nai Noach, for all of humanity. In Acts 15, when they had the council, describing and deciding how Gentiles could come into the church, into the covenant, and be made right with God. And the decision is that, well, we ought not require anything more than was required of Noah. If Noah could be made righteous before God, before circumcision and before the ceremonial laws given to, Ab to, to Moses, then Gentiles can be in Christ on the basis of the pattern of the covenant given to Noah. If we take pagans and to turn them into and to people, moral, righteous, Gentiles, there is a tremendous worth and value to, um, to, to world history, right? When Klal Yisrael rules the world, when Klal Yisrael is supreme, and the nations of the world are subject to the Jewish people, and under the umbrella of the Jewish people, and the Gentiles recognize the supremacy of the Jewish people and they assist us. That's Tikkun Olam. Everyone is better off when Klal Yisrael is supreme. And then the nations of the world are subject to the Jewish people. 